These days, Cindy Lauper is a full-time city girl. This singer was actually living in a quiet, out-of-town Connecticut retreat for over three decades. But after placing it on the market in 2017, she packed her bags for her current apartment in the Upper West Side, and today we're gonna take a look. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. For more than 30 years, this Saddle Hill Road estate has been home to Cindy Lauper, her husband, actor Dave Thornton, and their son. From the very beginning, Cindy always intended this place to be her musical sanctuary, a getaway where she could work in peace and that's exactly what happened. While living here, Cindy would write some of her most popular music, including five albums and her Tony Award winning musical Kinky Boots. First built in 1975 for footwear designer Vince Camuto, the home was sold to Cindy in 1986, soon after he vacated. This 3,900 square foot residence is designed in a classic Connecticut style with a cedar mansard roof, etched glass doors, and a large palladium window centralized in the living room that offers amazing seasonal lake views. Easily one of the standout features of the home is the classic 19th century front door which was sourced from an actual 19th century English manor house. Speaking of European flavor, the interior of the home is largely the work of the founder of French country style, Howard Kaplan. In fact, he imported a special press from Italy to hand stencil Cindy's walls, like in the vaulted ceiling of the Great Room, where all that craftsmanship is framed by large wooden beams. Not far from there is Cindy's kitchen, which includes a breakfast nook that features a train car bench imported all the way from Paris, France. Then there's the master bedroom with its intricate mosaics made from imported French tiling. In fact, all of Cindy's bathroom, sinks, bidets, Yes, this is the kind of house that includes bidets, as well as toilets are 19th century French pieces. Meanwhile, the tile in the master bathroom is more of a modern era and imported from England. Moving on to the recording studio above the garage, Cindy has decorated the place like a museum with her many platinum records, providing an accent to the wall above her soundboard. There's even a throw pillow on a nearby love seat that has Cindy's face airbrushed onto it. This family home also has a sprawling partial wraparound stone terrace that overlooks the backyard and the kidney-shaped swimming pool that's been built into the side of a ravine. Tall trees and shrubs do their part to obscure any nosy neighbors, and for the most part, the whole of this acre and a half of property feels totally remote, which is probably why Cindy stayed here for as long as she ultimately did. But then in 2017, Cindy finally felt like it was time for a permanent change. That's when she put her home on the market for $1.25 million. But three months later, she'd reduced the price to $935,000, her broker told the Stanford Advocate at the time. The listing got worldwide attention and a lot of interest at the original price point, but the physics of real estate in general and the state of the market right now came into play. We decided to price it aggressively and got at least five or six offers in a bidding war. Cindy might have wound up with a bidding war in her hands, but she still ended up eating what she must have considered to be a loss when she finally sold the home for $804,000, almost 500K less than what she was originally asking for. But hey, don't feel too bad for Cindy, because when I tell you about the background to her New York apartment, you're gonna discover that the universe sometimes even things out. Cindy Lauper is now officially a city girl full time. After selling her home in Connecticut because her son was moving off to college, Cindy and her hubby decided to move to the Big Apple and live permanently in a building that they have long rented in the Upper West Side. And I said rented, not owned. And boy oh boy is there a lot of baggage with this property. This building is conveniently and pretty controversially rent stabilized. This legendary limestone landmark has wooed famous tenants throughout the years, everyone from Al Pacino to Cindy Poitier, and yes, Cindy and Dave too. But the Apthorpe building, as it's called, has been a hotbed for corruption for decades. Even the state attorney general's office has investigated its shady business practices in the past. Let's talk a little bit about the physical nature of the building. Listed on the Register of Historic Places, the Apthorpe takes up an entire New York City block, all the way from Broadway to West End Avenue, between 78th and 79th streets, so you know it's massive. Modeled after the Palazzo Pitti in Florence, Italy, the original owner of this building, William Waldorf Astor, had it built in 1906. Soon afterwards, thanks to its grand courtyard, the building would become a hub for NYC's rich and famous, 
allowing them to live in ultimate luxury at rent-stabilized prices. And here's the extremely convoluted way in which Cindy Lauper came to be a resident here. Back in 1992, a guy named Shlomo Baron, yes, that's his real name, agreed to lease an apartment in the building from the then owners. At the time, Shlomo, he agreed in his lease not to use this apartment as his primary residency. What does that have to do with anything? Well, the owners used that as an excuse to remove the apartment from rent regulation. And then they began charging Shlomo $2,400 a month in rent as opposed to what it was supposed to be only $507 a month. Not willing to take that lying down, Shlomo came up with a plan. And this is where Cindy Lauper comes in. Never moving into the unit at all, Shlomo turned around and immediately sublet the four room apartment to Cindy and Dave. And what price? Well. $3,250 a month. That's how you beat the system. The only problem was, eventually, Cindy and Dave caught on to what was going on. In 1996, Cindy and Dave sued Shlomo, claiming that they were being overcharged under the rent stabilization law. The court would eventually rule in Cindy's favor, saying that because Shlomo was never living there, she was the actual tenant. Thus, the apartment was subject to rent regulations. However, in 2000, Cindy and Dave would then sue the building's owners, asking them to set the rent back to the original $507 a month price in New York City for millionaires. Yeah, right. The owners, citing the law's four-year statute of limitations for challenging rents, offered to cut the amount owed to $2,500 a month, which was the base rent the building had been charging for years at this point. Rather than agree, the matter went back to court. Eventually, the court ruled that setting the rent at $2,500 would effectively reward the owners for wrongdoing, and then they came to the decision that the new rent should be calculated by a different formula. Anyways, long story short, for years now, Cindy has only been paying $988 a month to live in an amazing New York City apartment. All I can say is sometimes a girl just wants to live rent free, or about as close to it as possible. All right guys, that's gonna bring an end to this Cindy Lauper house tour. Be sure to leave your thoughts about Cindy's former Connecticut home down below and tell me what you think about how much she spends on her New York apartment while you're at it. Personally, I liked her Connecticut property and all the unique style within it. I would have stayed there and avoided the apartment drama, but that's just me. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I can't wait to see you all again on our next house tour. Bye.